Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's been a while since I put a video together. Well, it is November, the end of November here in New York, in Orange County, and it's cold out. I got some lighters on, uh, but behind me is November 2183 Alpha uh, in my hangar, and uh, it's finally back, ready to go. It had a handful of months, uh, actually about seven weeks or so, at uh, Ventures Aviation in Sky Manor, November 4-0 in New Jersey. And a few weeks after that was done, I was on vacation, and then, then I had to bring it to Mortar Aviation in Mount Pocono, and that is in Pennsylvania, uh, Mike Pop Oscar. And so after all that, the annual, the annual's about a month because I had uh, Gammy injectors installed, motor mounts installed, and so a good welfare check over the plane. The plane is in excellent condition, no corrosion, nothing is going on, runs great. Uh, so I'm really excited. The high compressions in the high 70s, um, I think the lowest was 76. The rest were higher than that even. And uh, as Kurt would say, wow, for a Continental, that's pretty good. <laughs> so she had an awesome report card at the annual. So today, you know, it's, it's been a, a while for a video, obviously, um, because of the annual and because I was selling my plane uh, November 6, 887 November, back in December and January and February. Th that, that time frame, I didn't want to fly it too much when it was for sale. So not a lot of videos then. And then I had some family uh, emergencies and issue that happened. Uh, it kind of sent me back a little bit more. And then of course the annual and the avionics upgrade. So today we're not gonna fly because it is cold. It is low IFR uh, at Orange County. And of course, every time I do a video, either the dogs or barking or there's construction going on in the background as you can hear because it's always like that when I do recording here. Uh, so yeah, so the airport is getting a new, a couple of new stuff going on, paving, uh, a new um, maintenance building, which is nice. And hopefully that beeping goes away. It did actually. So we're gonna take a look at the airplane. I'm gonna go over the panel, the new Garmin setup. Um, and everybody is asking me, uh, you know, on the other videos I do, small videos on my phone, I put on uh, Facebook, uh, about the Dynon setup compared to the Garmin setup. I haven't really flown a lot with the, the Garmin setup yet, um, but I'll go over a couple things that I've already noticed that about the difference of the two. Um, so, so stick around, I hope you enjoyed this short video and we'll go over the inside of the plane. See you in a bit. Okay, we're back. We are back. So here's November 2183 Alpha. Again, it's as you can see outside, it is very, maybe not really, but very low IFR. We're not flying today and it's cold. So there's freezing temperatures up there for icing. We don't want to do that. Um, so she's plugged in. Of course, the dogs have to have her nose out of the hangar door because that's what they do. Very nosy. So she is plugged in. Nice moving blanket, very thick moving blanket, which I like. And of course, cow plugs, and she is plugged in. So all, nice and warm. Uh, all the cylinders are wrapped. Uh, the oil pan is wrapped. Uh, I'm sorry, oil pan has a pad. So all the six cylinders are wrapped. So it keeps at a nice 100 and about 20 degrees or so. So I start the airplane up when it's freezing out. Um, it's about 125 degrees, oil temperature says, which is nice on startup. So, of course, I have my tug, which I need on this airplane because it is a long body and it's heavy. Uh, and you definitely have to have a tug for this plane uh, with full fuel, 95 gallons of fuel. It's heavy, it's long, and it's just really heavy plane. It's about 806 pounds, I believe, heavier than the C model. Um, and you guys can check these tugs out. Awesome, awesome tugs. Minimax aircraft tugs you can go shop online they're really cool very simple in the mooney setup i mean it's 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 battery chargeable it's very easy no motors no gasoline uh no big uh tugs to be pulling around and charging very simple to use forward backwards very 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 easy so it's very ho easy hookup for the mooney as well simple 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 
goes inside. The drive shaft is right there. The chain, it runs on the tire. And no, it does not chew up your tire. Not at all. So we're gonna go over that with you guys too. And of course, it's winter. Um, so my friends like to store their stuff in my hangar, which is okay. Uh, but the paint is probably a eight and a half to nine out of 10. There's a few little stuff like this, which is not even a big deal, like very, speed brakes, of course. Uh, so it's not very little stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, it's probably a good eight and a half, nine out of 10 for Mooney Ovation. So brand new, I got also, so I had it, LED um, landing lights and uh, taxi lights, um, the belly beacons LED, LED strobes now, that's been done for a while. Um, so, and recon lights are also LED. Awesome, plain at night, it's like bright. We can look at the paint. I know it's very difficult to kind of get it on video, but it's very clean, shiny paint on this aircraft, and it's amazing. And of course, these are LED as well, the back of the wing tip here. So it's nice at night. These are the running lights. So awesome. So I also have, because again, the panel is, is now, well, it's like my other Mooney, it's all glass, but it didn't have this um, setup where you can plug it in for GPU. I mean, it's a little dark in the hangar, sorry guys. It's dark outside. I tried to put some lights on, but it's not uh, that bright as I thought it would be. Uh, this, air, this aircraft does have air conditioning. So you have the scoop underneath right there, and you have the vents on both sides. I have covers for them. I mean, um, um, plugs for them, but I didn't plug them in. They're over there on a couch somewhere. Uh, and of course, the evasion, the OR antennas, and so on and so forth. So the cool thing about this, which I like, that I didn't have on the Ranger, okay, is that I have a GPU, very small unit, 28 amps, I'm sorry, 20, yeah, 28 volts. Uh, it's very simple to use. So I have this little cart here, actually I pull it out. Of course, again, people like to store stuff here, but it's okay. I'm gonna unplug this. I keep a fan going all year round just to circulate the air in the hangar uh, on low, just to keep it air moving around in the hangar here. So I'm gonna, we're just gonna plug this in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> just getting over a cold too, so go figure. So you plug it in, you turn it on. This is white lightning aviation ground power. You can get them online. Very, very cool, simple. Make sure everything is lit up, 28.6. Let not see it on the camera, but that's what it says. And the blue is what I'm gonna be using in the airplane right now, zero, because nothing is plugged in. It should go up a little bit when I plug it in. So it might need two hands to do this, but let's see if I can do it. Get a little bit more room here, pull this back a little bit more. Don't wanna hit the motorcycle. There we go. I might need two hands to do this. We'll try to do it with one. So, okay. So just plug it in. It's gonna make that little connection noise. Went up a little bit. So it is working, plugged in, and we are good. Let me make sure it's nice and snug. There we go, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go inside the airplane. Make sure it's all running. Perfect. And of course, the dogs are like, what is going on? Okay, see you guys in a second in the plane here. Oh, also, LED as well. So the whole plane is LED, which is nice. And it does make a difference. So I also have in this airplane two battery chargers, or tenders, I should say, slash chargers. Again, it's probably dark in here. I apologize. I don't know if I can make it lighter, uh, but we'll get through it. But I do have two chargers. It's hard to see. There's, there's, I have two batteries in this airplane. Um, and over here, again, you probably can't see it. And I do apologize. Uh, plugs for it. So it keeps the battery nice and charged. It decharges, charges. It works very, very well. Um, I don't want to lose these batteries with uh, not charging them enough or dying because they are about $1,000 a piece. 
these days, as everybody knows. And I'm not, don't want to spend two grand on batteries. So it's worth spending money on the charger. Actually, I'll take one out and I'll show it to you. So basically here is a charger. It's a maintenance charger, it, you know, so it does a lot of different things. It doesn't just keep it charged. Uh, it's, so it's, it's for Concord uh, batteries only, which they're expensive. Um, and, but it works very, very well. And again, there's two batteries, so I have two of these. Uh, and there's two plugs into the plane. So that's good. And just so you know, the GPU plug on the other side of the plane does not charge the battery. Uh, it just runs the avionics. Just so you guys know that. So I do, I'm going to keep this closed a little bit. You don't need it open. So I do have a little heater inside, a very small heater to keep the cabin warm. Hey, what are you doing? So, yeah, so I got to close the garage door, or I mean the hangar door a little bit more. See all the things you got to do? You have dogs and you have... <laughs> Olive, get out of there. We're closing it more. Yeah, I don't want those guys to. Before we hop aboard, here's another vent for the air conditioner. So you have two, one on each side, and you have the big scoop down in the bottom, facing the opposite direction, so you don't lose a lot of airspeed. Mooney, th Mooney thought about everything. So here we go. Gonna hop inside. So we are inside 2183 Alpha, Mooney Ovation. And of course, everybody knows the back seats on these are nice captains, they recline, and I have pillows uh, from a follower. Thank you guys again so much. Cool pillows, thank you. AC vent is in the back. They have an AC vent in the back back. And up here, okay, you have more vents for air conditioning for the co-pilot, pilot, pilot lights obviously and then of course you have the back passenger sorry it's upside down here for um air conditioning as well and of course here's your oxygen ports has oxygen and it's empty right now have to fill it up okay so let's get it going here let's put on the power i'm gonna kind of sit in the middle so i can kind of get the camera and again, it's not one of my better videos, but it gives you an idea of what I've been doing for the last uh, six months or so with everything with annuals. So we're going to put on the airplane. I'm going to turn off the strobes, taxi lights, everything is off up here. I don't need that right now. I will show you how bright they are. Um, and I'm going to put on the master. So we have a G. 3x touch my main screen the 10 inch and i have on the co-pilot side the portrait g3x so it's going to load up it takes a few seconds not a lot there you go not a lot of time so there's my engine monitoring so here's my engine monitoring um again hopefully you guys can see it on the video i apologize but it's not going to have synthetic vision because it has no signal from the outside. We're in the hangar. But as you can see, and hopefully you guys can see it, um, the oil temperature is reading 127 degrees. So when I start this airplane up, it's going to be 127 degrees. It's not going to be zero. And you don't want to start your airplane up, you know, when it's freezing out. Yeah, you really have to preheat it. That's just what you have to do, unfortunately. Okay, so that's that, and I'm going to turn on everything on here. Now again, the GPU is on. Let me look, let me look at it. So it is drawing, which is good. And if it's not working, it'll flash uh, alternator volts up here. So it's working and connected because it's not flashing. Okay. The 750XI, so I did upgrade my other panel from, the, from 750 to the XI so I can get smart glide. Okay, and we're up to date. Okay, continue, continue, continue. So here is the panel, folks. So, uh, you know, this comes on first, and you can start it um, without hurting anything because it's your engine monitoring, of course, uh, as well. So 
I like this display. I think it's great. Um, I think the synthetic vision is great. Uh, the 750 is an awesome unit. The Garmin 500 autopilot. I, I can't say anything bad about this setup. Okay, nothing bad about the setup. Uh, the autopilot is awesome. Level button is amazing. I mean, I had this thing like this. Hit that button, straightens out for you. The yaw dampener, if you're thinking, if you have a Mooney, uh, well, any plane really, and it's available for a yaw dampener, spend the extra bucks, folks. I gotta tell you, it does make a difference when you're traveling air and you're flying. Um, it, you, Cause I take it off and I put it on. And uh, I gotta tell you that you can feel a tail this, Moonies are typically pretty good in, 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 in turbulent air. They're, they're not all over the place. Once you, tr once you trim a Mooney out, it's not that bad. But that is really cool to have. It, it, it's really cool. It's unfortunately, I mean, that's not unfortunately, but you got to make sure you just take that turn off on landing because uh, you don't want that fight in your rudders. Um, so very simple. I also have no GPS because we're inside the hangar here. It might, it might reach the signal, but probably not. But I do, I, I got the audio panel inside the 750 and that's basically your intercom system for you know for the co-pilots and passengers and it has a bluetooth and all the fun stuff which i love uh the here's the comms you can switch stuff out you can split mode playback control the cabin speaker volumes and all this fun stuff 3d audio so you can listen to two things out kind of once in your ears one on each side uh so very 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 cool system when it comes to the i didn't know if i was gonna like it um, but I do like it. I got really used to it pretty quickly. So that, that is amazing. Um, now I, I didn't get the, um, this, the, uh, out, um, sorry, the, um, transponder put into this because I've already had the 345 just right here. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry if it's not bright enough in here. Um, let me see if these lights can come on here. That can make a big difference. I'll put, see, I'll put this on. It doesn't make a big difference, but so 345 um, trans. I already had that transponder, and it made no sense for me to um, take it out, try to sell it, blah 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 blah. So I was like, and it's expensive. It was this, that came with the plane, and then the other 750 came with the plane. So I kept this and decided to keep this and go with the audio panel built into the 750XI. And that's what I decided to do. It's just easier, whatever. Um, I can't I can't change the the squawk on the 750. I could have added it, but I didn't add it. There's too much going on. I didn't want to have all the clutter. So I did so I did put it it is up here on the three X touch. So I can squawk and do all my stuff right here if I wanted to. Okay, very easy. Very simple. Or if I if I feel like if I'm too bored, I can just Let's do it by hand over here. But I, I squawk using the 3X touch. So, very, very cool. The autopilot, the approach mode, the GPS is obviously built in. Uh, it's I can't say anything bad about the Garmin 500 autopilot. I just can't. It's, it's very easy. Uh, it works great with all the instruments. The um, V-Nav is really cool if you have the step downs uh, to use. Uh, it's just amazing. The, uh, it's, it's obviously, these are these are all WASP now. I mean, I don't think anybody's selling non-WASP. Maybe some smaller companies or smaller units, but uh, WASP, so you get the, uh, on the ORNAV approaches, you get the LPVs. So it's, it really gets you down pretty good. And the glide slope will capture. And this airplane also has electric trim um an electric rudder and so the all dampener uses the rudder to keep it to keep it straight and sometimes periodically i'll turn off the all dampener and line up the ball if it's a little bit off this way oops this way the um it's not always working hard to keep the to keep the ball center so i kind of help it a little bit you don't have to uh but everything's electric so the trim the trim's electric on this as well so basically when you when you hit the approach mode okay and you're not doing step downs okay uh like a vor you can't you know you just you got to do the step downs and the vor approaches but the the r navs with the lpvs and the ils's of course you hit this approach mode and it captures the glide slope which would say which would be up here um when you took the autopilot let's put the autopilot on what happened okay 
So here's all the, here's the yaw dampener. It always comes automatically. Flight, flight directory comes on. They're rolling the pitch. So, oops, I keep hitting that button. Sorry. So you'll see the, you'll see the, 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 the um, it's a turning. <laughs> uh, you'll see the uh, glide slope capture up on the top. So glide slope is pretty cool. We'll turn the autopilot off. Um, so yeah, so it's very, very cool. The glide path on the, on the RNAVs, of course, and the glide slopes on the ILSs. So you get, a, you get a localizer and a glide slope, and it's really easy to look, not all over the place in jumble, so I do like that. It's very simple to put minimums in. You hit the, this very quickly. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to look at the same time with the camera right in front of it. And you set minimums, very easy to set minimums in this system. Um, the dyno was very easy to do it too. So, uh, and you can dial it into, you know, a couple feet. So 682, whatever you want to do. Um, there you go. Very, very nice. Very simple on the 750s to put a flight plan in. Again, I'm, I'm in a uh, hangar. I'm just gonna put, let me see if it does anything. Okay, MGJ. Now let's just say we're going to one Bravo one. Columbia County. Let me see if it comes up. Oh, okay. It's, it's not gonna have GPS, but it's gonna come up on here. So here's your flight plan stuff, okay? Which is nice. So you could put an approach over here. So let's do, again, hopefully you guys can see it. Let's do load procedure, let's do approach, let's do, uh, so here's the LPV that I was talking about, okay? So RNAV3 GPS LPV. So you get the, you get a little bit lower and you can use, uh, I think it's 500, 500 minimums over there. So um, you can hit that, we'll hit that, and you know, tra we'll transition, we'll use Crow, but that's where, we're not gonna do a reverse, um, course reverse at Crow. We're gonna go, it's just going from Orange County to uh, Columbia County, which is a straight line, basically. So we're gonna hit no. So let's, we can activate it. So now you can load load the approach, not activate it, because if, you're, if you can get a head start on ETC, but if they might be, especially for the tower airport, they might switch you last minute, so you can always load it and then whatever. Um, if, you know, then you can, you know, uh, just load it and have it in there. If you load and activate it, then it's activated. Then if you have to change it, you have to go back and change more, have a more of a process and change it out. So we'll load and activate it anyway. So there you go. That's going to say man, no GPS, blah blah, no traffic. We know that because we're in a hangar. So that's that. So and I have this set up on the knobs here where uh, you got traffic on the first turn right you yeah, have and I have the um, terrain and of course my positioning is not gonna so I can't see it it's, it is what it is and of course my map goes back to one so it's nice to have that too very quite they're very fast and the X size it works pretty works fast so now it automatically comes over here on the g3x um, the flight plan so it's very and I, you know you hear all the fans the fans kicked on because it's keeping the avionics cool um, but so you have this button here and you can find the chart, which is, whoop, there you go. It already knows we're going to do an RNAV approach in three. So you can just make it big and then here's your charts. And it will put, of course, the airplane on the chart for you. Like I was saying to you before, um, here's crowd. You can do a reverse course reversal here if you want it to. Um, and here's minimums here I was telling you about. So if you LPV, and this is why people always say, and you know, I'm not, very good when it comes to explaining certain things but i do know that a lot of guys say i don't need was whatever i mean if you're if you if you're a vfr pilot you don't do a lot of ifr flying i guess you don't really need the the, the was but if you do it a lot of if you did do ifr flying and you're going places the extra money get the was and i'll tell you why so lpv if you have was on the rnav get you down to 500 500 feet Okay, 300, two feet over the ground. So if you are, don't have WAS, as you can see here, LPV is WAS, this is non-WAS, so LNAV, VNAV approach. You lose 242 feet, and it's two one quarter mile visibility, whereas here it's one. So a big difference between the two with non-WAS WAS 500, non-WAS 842. So that extra 242 feet, I'm sorry, eight, I'm sorry, 342 feet 
can get you in. Might not get, I'm sorry, might not get you in, okay? But that 300 feet difference could get you in to an airport. And that's why WAS, I believe, is important because you get more satellite, you get more, it's more accuracy. And that's why I believe WAS is important if you're flying approaches, it's a little more accurate, and that's just my opinion on it. And again, 842 feet difference, you know, in minimums, it's huge in a GA airplane when you're flying uh, uh, with non with uh, uh, with a non WAS compared to WAS airplane. Here's my example. So there you go. Everything is here on the chart, and you can go back. Of course, here's your other chart. The only thing here's the only thing now. A couple things I noticed about the Garmin's products, okay, compared to the Dynon product, is that Garmin, great company, great products, do not get me wrong. You have to fish for screens. You, you can't, so there's no hard keys down here. There's a couple direct, okay, and you can actually do, um, uh, you have GPS on here. If I lose, if I lose the 750, it has its own GPS built in, so I can I can navigate with this if that if I lost a 750. Okay, if I lose the 750 and I lose this, or I lose the 750, autopilot will be will now be going using the the G5. That's the backup. It automatically switch over to this as a backup, so the autopilot will still work, which is nice to know. But back to Garmin compared to Dynon is that again no hard keys. You gotta fish for a lot of different things. There's a lot of screens you gotta go through. So now here's a chart, okay? And then the Dynon is very simple to put VFR chart, IFR high and low charts, and blah, blah. Well, this one you have to, and I, you can't just scroll over and find it, okay? You have to go to the chart, I hit the menu button, and then you can select what you wanna do, VFR. I mean, I know it's, it's, it's not a big deal, but there's your charts, but you know, you, you, who is who's gonna read the whole damn book on how to look for stuff on this product? I mean, I guess you should. I've learned. I read most of it. Uh, a lot found on YouTube, which is easier. But like Diamond had a very simple spot to that, that selects your uh, chart, whether it's VFR, IFR, high and low charts, instead of going to a menu screen. Okay, and if you hit it twice, it goes to this. The emergency button, of course, is your smart glide. Smart glide. Disabled. Disabled because we're not a thousand feet above the ground, so it's not going to work. That's just kind of give you an idea. But back, and that's how you would so how to find things. I mean, it's great, it's awesome, uh, but you do got to search a little bit harder for things because it's majority touchscreen. So that's that. So here is, of course, your engine monitoring. I have it built in, so I didn't want a separate box for engine monitoring, a separate box for this. You, know, you guys know how I am with uniformity. Now, the one thing I don't like about this panel, and, and, and you guys, if you guys follow me on Facebook and YouTube, you know more about it, is that I like things uniformed. And I don't know if it's because of my background or whatever, but I don't like things all over the panel. I do not like the setup over here, as you can see. I just, I just don't, it bothers me. Um, so, my, if you guys know um, 6887 November, it was clean, it was uniform, things were perfect. I don't like how this is down here, that's up there. I, I wish that this was kind of up here, it's blended in. So uh, it just, it's not, a, it, it, it's not a big deal. I know you're saying, what, well, what's a big deal? It's not, it's just me. Um, I wish I could get rid of the enunciator panel. I might in the future, because I, I could have pushed this up a little bit more. I like having the autopilot higher. I could have put the autopilot down below, but I do, chose not to. I like it higher, I don't like it low, next to all, you know, the, the mixture and the throttles, and then just have it up high. And it's easy for me to get to it really quickly. Stuff down low, or if you have the autopilot, excuse me, down here, it's just, it's, I don't, it's just too much in the way. So I like, I like the setup, I just don't like how this is not uniformed on this side of the airplane. It's kind of all over the place. So, and so other questions is why I chose not to center, here's the yoke right here, okay? Center the yoke 
with the G3X because if I get it over here, I have to put the 7 I mean the G5 over here. I didn't want all that commotion going on over here. I know again, petty, but this is how I liked it. And the other thing is, here's a Mooney, here's the armrest, here's the oxygen. It, it, it buffs out, it buffs out a little bit. So if I had this moved over more, it's gonna be off center for me, my eyes. But the where, the, how I sit in the Mooney and how people sit in the Mooney, this is actually straight for my eyes to look, and it's not off center. It's off center on the yoke, as you can see, but it's not off center for me personally. Uh, so that's basically the panel. I mean, I mean and again, this is pretty. This is pretty nice too. I, I I got this as a backup slash for the slash for the co-pilot. Um, has it also has a PDF, all the fun stuff. It's basically this G3X. Um, but same thing besides this portrait and it's a seven inch screen. So it's just, and it's, I can, when I take off, I put the engine monitoring on that screen when I take off, or I can simply touch the screen and it goes over there. So, so that's a couple of cool things. Um, I do have to say that the Dynon engine monitoring graphics and stuff gives you more information and it's a little bit more, a little more better graphics in the engine monitoring. Uh, I do I do know that. I'm gonna get rid of this because we're not smart lighting anywhere right now. <laughs> uh, other than that, that's my, it's my backup radio slash nav. So this is my, I can do ILSs and I can do VORs using this. So I didn't, I didn't wanna do too much commotion with this. It's a backup, it's great. I simply can just change it to, um, to uh, the GPS, GPS one or GPS two. I can get the ILS, I can have two needles. There's a lot of things you can do that at different time because I'm running out of time. I don't want the video to go on too long and too boring. Uh, but a lot of things you can do with the system. Um, overall, I love it. I think it's great. Um, only thing, like I said before, is I don't like you gotta fish for a lot of things. And I have to set up the map on this side too, you know, uh, just because that's how I have it set up for now. Some guys have traffic and some guys have this and that which is awesome, but I like having the, the flight plan to my right, my legs, and all that other fun stuff. I also put playback is on here as a, as a soft key, so I have to go through, again, I don't have to go through the menu. So if I want, you know, you, you gotta go through menus, folks, to find stuff, where the IFD that I had from Avidine was a little bit easier only because it had the hard keys as well on the side and it's, it was quicker to get the things so but then but you can also but you program on the garmin 750 you program the keys to be kind of right here so you don't have to go through all the menus so i have the approach button right there as you can see i have the playback oh the playback is there uh distance to de destination is up top and of course tracking uh ground speed is all right there ground speed is over here as well um i could also change frequencies as nav2 standby com2 and of course up here you have com1 standby nav1 and so on and so forth so i can i can change frequencies from there as well if i wanted to so very cool system um very similar again folks very similar to the dynon stuff um it's basically like, the only complaint i have with the garmin and it's not really a complaint, it's more of a preference, I guess, is you gotta search. You have to search, you have to search. You have to search through menus, okay? You have to search to find stuff. Um, and they can be programmed, you can change things around and do what you have to do. But uh, it's just you gotta do some searching. Again, there's no, there's no hard keys. I'm sorry, there's, again, there's no hard keys except for back menu, direct, and of course, nearest airport. So, but, but Dynon had a lot more hard keys that you can easily click and find things from. Um, that's all I have for you. Here's the two batteries. Oh, you like my, my fire missile button here? <laughs> it, it's a cigarette lighter that I wanted to close off and I found out on eBay. So I was like, let me put that there. I have an eject one, eject button, and a fire missile button. And here's the two batteries. They all have come with two batteries. And of course, the air conditioning is down here. 
and of course the heat is down here. The go around is down here. Uh, automatically will pitch up for you, which if I push it, oh, it's all piled off. So that is it, folks, from here. And here is the panel all done and G5 is the backup, as we know. So that's basically it, folks. Uh, we're gonna do some flying. We're gonna get videos on YouTube and Facebook. I did some small videos on uh, Facebook and so on and so forth. Uh, but like I said, a lot of downtime. I had a couple of family emergencies. Uh, again, my mom passing and my best friend passing a few months apart unexpectedly. Uh, these were not planned deaths. Sometimes deaths are planned uh, with hospice and so on and so forth. These were not planned. These were unexpected. Uh, with basically a couple hours of notice of, of people passing away. Uh, and, my, and my best friend, unfortunately, I found um, him passed in his room. So that was a crazy time for me. Uh, the last several months, plus the plane's been out, plus the annuals, and me actually getting to know the airplane. It's a lot faster than the C model. It's got speed brakes, it's heavier, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's on the approaches, it was going, going, getting out way too fast, but I got everything down pat now, everything is great. Um, everything's going well for me personally, the plane's doing great, I'm happy with everything, and we're gonna do some flying very soon. The weather is kind of crappy today, so in a very near future, we'll be putting cameras up, I already have the mounts, you probably can't see it, set up for some cameras, and we're ready to rock and roll in the Mooney Ovation. So 1999, built in October of 99, Mooney Ovation. And I have to say, uh, I'm blessed to be in this position. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and, and very happy of the outcome. So always work hard, folks. You guys know that, I always talk about that. And things do happen, but you gotta have hard work, dedication, and a little bit of luck will get you where you need to be. All right, folks, till next time, fly safe, be safe. I will see you. Any questions, please email me at pilotfun101 at gmail.com. Check out my Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, YouTube. Uh, Facebook, thank you for the support. 133,000 followers on Facebook. Thank you. And we'll see you guys very soon. Take care.